Engine oil giants have convinced millions that their bottles hold secret formulas worth every extra dollar. But when a 1999 legal ruling quietly allowed refined crude to be labeled synthetic, brands like Mobile One and Castrol rewrote the rules overnight, turning marketing into money. Today, most oils share the same origins, and you are paying for a myth. How did oil labels become more powerful than chemistry? This is where the real story begins. In 1999, a quiet decision by the National Advertising Division of the Better Business Bureau settled a bitter dispute between two oil giants. Mobile argued that only oils made from pure lab-built polyalpha olefin PAO deserve to be called synthetic. Castrol countered that its own oil, made from highly refined Group 3 mineral-based stocks, offered the same performance and should wear the same label. The National Advertising Division reviewed the chemistry, tested the claims, and issued its verdict. Castrol could keep using the word synthetic for its hydrocracked Group 3 oil, as long as its performance claims stood up to scrutiny. There was no federal order, no new law. It was a self-regulatory ruling that changed the meaning of a word on every oil bottle in America. From that moment, synthetic no longer meant lab-made, it meant highly refined. The Federal Trade Commission never issued a technical definition or stepped in to overrule the National Advertising Division. Instead, the industry adopted the new language overnight. Now mineral oils that pass the right tests could be bottled, branded, and sold at synthetic prices. The chemistry inside the bottle stayed almost the same. What changed was the story on the label and the price tag that came with it. Castrol wasted no time. By the early 2000s, its ads were everywhere, promising fully synthetic protection and leaning hard on the tagline, it is more than just oil. It is liquid engineering. The new definition for synthetic opened the floodgates. Mobile One doubled down, plastering full synthetic across bottles and television spots, while racing endorsements and factory fill claims tried to reinforce its status as the original. Pennzoil joined in with Pennzoil Synthetic, pitching cleaner engines and longer life as reasons to trade up. Valvoline pushed SynPower as full synthetic motor oil, promising to keep engines running like new. The language converged. Every major brand suddenly offered maximum protection and advanced synthetic technology. Within a couple of years, store shelves were lined with bottles shouting the same message. Commercials hammered home that full synthetic meant superior, no matter the base stock inside. The chemistry behind the label had barely changed, but the story had. Consumers faced a wave of new claims, including ultimate protection, engineered for performance, and trusted by champions. The price tags rose to match. What was once a niche for enthusiasts became a mainstream upsell, justified by marketing more than by molecular structure. The rush was not about what was in the bottle. It was about who could tell the most convincing story. For drivers, the difference was no longer in the oil itself, but in the promise printed on the front. Every bottle of engine oil starts with a base stock, and not all base stocks are created equal. The American Petroleum Institute sorts them into five groups, each with its own origin and chemistry. Group Y is the old guard, solvent-refined mineral oil, used less and less in modern engines. Group 2 is a step up, more refined, clearer, and with fewer impurities, now common in most conventional oils. Group 3 is where things get interesting. These are mineral oils too, but they have been hydrocracked and purified until their molecules line up almost like synthetics. Thanks to a 1999 decision by the Adi Ars Ad Industry Self-Regulator, Group 3 oils can legally wear the synthetic label even though they start as crude oil. Today, the vast majority of full synthetic oils on store shelves, no matter the brand, are built from Group 3 base stocks. Group 4 is a different animal entirely. These are poly-alpha olefins, called PAO fluids, made in chemical plants from scratch. PAO fluids are engineered for uniformity, with molecules designed to resist breakdown and flow in extreme temperatures. True lab-made synthetics? Group 4 oils are more expensive to produce and now make up a shrinking share of the retail market. Group 5 is the catch-all, esters and other specialty fluids, often blended in for specific properties like detergency or seal conditioning. 
Most bottles blend groups 3, IV, and sometimes V to hit the right balance of price, performance, and marketing claims. For most drivers, the difference between group 3 and group 4 is invisible. Both can pass the same industry tests and both protect engines when matched to the right specs. But behind the scenes, the shift to Group 3 has let brands cut costs while keeping prices high. The chemistry is close, but the story told on the label is what you pay for. Understanding these groups is the first step to seeing past the marketing and knowing what is really inside the bottle. On the factory floor, the story behind the label begins to unravel. Most engine oils, whether they carry a premium brand or a store name, are built from the same basic ingredients. The real secret lies in the additive package, a blend of detergents, anti-wear agents, and friction modifiers. But those additives do not come from the oil giants themselves. They are supplied by just a handful of chemical companies, Lubrizol, Infenium, and Afton Chemical. These three firms dominate the global market, shipping drums of identical additive packages to blenders across North America and Europe. At the blending plant, the process is simple. Base oil, usually group three from one of a few refineries, arrives by tanker. Additives are pumped in, following a recipe set by the required certification, not by brand magic. Once the batch is mixed, it is ready for the filling line. Here, the same kettles and pumps can fill bottles for a dozen different labels in a single day. Plant managers quietly confirm what the supply chain makes obvious, the same line that fills a jug for a well-known brand in the morning might switch to a private label in the afternoon. The only changes are the bottle, the cap, and the label. The chemistry stays the same. One anonymous former production manager from a major Midwest blender described the routine. They said they ran a batch of 5.W30 that met APISN specifications. The first half went into national brand bottles. The second half went into big box store jugs. No reformulation, no extra steps. The only difference was the price at checkout. Non-disclosure agreements keep most insiders from speaking openly, but the details slip out in trade forms and legal filings. When a retailer and a brand specify the same viscosity and certification, the finished oil often comes from the same tank. Additive companies confirm the pattern. Lubrizol's own marketing materials highlight that their packages are used by both global brands and private labels. The performance claims on the bottle depend on the additive blend and the base oil, not on a proprietary formula. For most oils on the shelf, the difference is in the marketing budget, not in the chemistry. The promise of a unique, superior formula is more story than substance. The reality is an industry built on shared supply chains, common ingredients, and a price gap that has little to do with what is inside the bottle. A five-quart jug of synthetic oil sits on the shelf at your local auto parts store. The sticker price reads $28. Down the aisle, a private label jug, same size, same viscosity, same API certification, sells for $14. Both bottles likely started with Group 3 base stock from the same refinery, blended with additive packages from the same suppliers. Yet the difference at checkout is not about chemistry. It is about branding, distribution, and the invisible cost of the story told on the front of the bottle. Every step from refinery to retail adds a slice to the final price. Distributors and wholesalers tack on their margin, usually 10 to 20%. Blenders and bottlers take another 20 to 30% for their role. Retailers add their own markup, often 40 to 50%, to cover shelf space and profit. But the real leap comes with the brand name, Major oil companies pour millions into advertising, racing sponsorships, and factory fill deals. In 2023, ExxonMobil spent $500 million on marketing for its lubricants division, while only $150 million went to research and development. Castrol and Pennzoil each direct over 20% of their budgets to ads and endorsements, backing everything from Formula One to NASCAR. These costs do not stay with the company, they are baked into the price you pay. The result is a retail gap that can reach 50 to 100%. A private label jug, often bottled in the same plant, sells for half the price of a national brand with identical performance specs. The premium covers the logo, the commercials, and the belief that the brand offers something special. 
For most oils on the shelf, the biggest ingredient in the price is not in the bottle at all. It is in the marketing budget. Each time you reach for a famous name, you are paying for a story, one carefully crafted to justify a markup that has little to do with the oil itself. Rows of oil bottles line the test bench, each stripped of its label and renamed with a code. In a sealed lab, analysts pour identical samples into calibrated beakers. Valvoline, Mobile One, Walmart Supertech, Kirkland Signature. No one knows which is which until the numbers are in. The first tests measure kinematic viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius. Every oil, regardless of price or brand, falls within a fraction of a point of the SAE 5W30 standard. Cold crank viscosity at minus 30 degrees Celsius. All pass, with Supertech and Kirkland matching the majors within the margin of error. High temperature, high shear stability shows no oil loses more than 10% viscosity, and the cheapest bottles sometimes edge out the premium names. Next, the additive package is put to the test. Total base number, the measure of acid fighting power, drops by the same 1.3 points for every 1,000 miles in both brand name and private label samples. Oxidation stability holds steady across the board, with every oil lasting well past the required 1,000 hour mark. Where metals measured in parts per million of iron and aluminum are nearly indistinguishable, less than 10 parts per million difference after a full 10,000 mile cycle. Blackstone Labs analyst calls it out. Specs match, save your cash. On the teardown bench, a do-it-yourself mechanic disassembles two identical trucks. One ran 200,000 miles on Valvoline, the other on Walmart Supertech. Cylinder bores are clean. Bearings show the same microscopic wear measured to the thousandth of an inch. No extra sludge, no varnish, no hidden scars. The mechanic shakes his head. Private label did just as well. The only thing different is the receipt. Fleet tests echo the lab. 10 vehicles, 10,000 miles, oils swapped, and samples sent to the lab. The data show no meaningful difference in protection or longevity. The numbers confirm what the supply chain already hinted when the label says APISP and the viscosity matches your manual, the engine does not know or care what you paid. The proof is not in the marketing, it is in the metal, the numbers, and the miles. Every oil change starts with three decisions, the right specs, the right filter, and the right interval. The owner's manual spells out exactly what your engine needs, the viscosity grade and certifications like APISP or ILSACGF6. Ignore the marketing on the bottle. If it matches the spec and viscosity your manual calls for, you are covered. That is true for a $12 jug or a $28 one. The number, like 5W30, measures how the oil flows cold and hot. That is not branding, it is a standardized test. Meeting the spec is what matters. The filter is just as important. A good oil filter traps dirt, soot, and tiny metal shavings before they can do damage. Look for filters with strong steel cases, silicone anti-drain back valves, and high quality media. These features keep oil clean and pressure steady, even in cold starts or long drives. Cheap filters can collapse or bypass too soon, letting debris circulate. Spending an extra couple of dollars on a filter makes more difference than paying for a premium oil label. Intervals are set by the engine's needs and you're driving, not by the promises on the bottle. Most modern cars can go from 5,000 to 7,500 miles between changes with synthetic oil, sometimes more if you drive mostly highway. Short trips, towing, or extreme heat mean you might need to change it sooner. Following the manual schedule, not the marketing hype, keeps engines healthy. Stick to the spec, use a quality filter, and change oil at the right interval. That is the real foundation of engine protection no matter what name is on the bottle. Skip the hype, trust the numbers. The shelves are stacked with bottles promising advanced protection, extended life, or high mileage secrets. But those claims are mostly marketing. Modern engine oils are already loaded with the detergent and anti-wear chemistry engines need. Additive companies know this, but they still push extra products such as friction modifiers, zinc boosters, and Teflon drops, preying on the fear that your oil is not enough.
In reality, pouring in extra additives can upset the balance, sometimes clog filters or harm emission systems. Blackstone Laboratories analyzes tens of thousands of oil samples each year and warns that most aftermarket additives do more harm than good. Their analysts see it in the data. Where metals spike, TBN drops faster, engines do not last longer. The best oils are already fully formulated. If you want real answers, do not buy the marketing. Buy a lab test. For about $35, you can send a sample of your used oil to a lab like Blackstone. They will check viscosity, wear metals, and acid buildup, and send you a report showing exactly how your oil is performing. No guesswork, no scare tactics, just facts. Private label oils from Walmart, Costco, and Amazon consistently match or beat the big brands in these tests. The savings are real and the evidence is public. Skip the additive aisle, skip the premium label, and trust the science. The smartest spenders check the specifications, use a quality filter, and let the lab tell the real story. That is how you keep your engine and your wallet running strong. Right now, oil giants spend billions shaping what you believe about their products, while private label oils proven in lab tests quietly match their performance at half the price. As marketing noise grows louder, your choices matter more. Every dollar sent to a label sustains their dominance. The real power in this market isn't under the cap, it's in your hands. Share your thoughts below and join the conversation.